Hey, this is the profit with Nick Black. It's time to chit chat. You know nothing about blockchain. We here to fix that. You want the news on them new stocks? This where you get that. So go and grab you a nice chair. It's time to sit back and talk to profit. Hey, hey, you talking to the profit? Hey, hey. You talk, we talking condos and nice clothes and dropping Lambos. I remember them night codes, we couldn't stand those. We tried to drive on them house roads, but had to stay low. Now there's solutions to hard bills we couldn't pay for. I talked to profit to get some profit, we couldn't change the top. If it's a stock and I need a cop it, I wait for him to drop it. Ain't no option, let's get it popping, we chilling in the trap. I need some crypto, put it in my pocket, by any means I rock. This is the profit with Nick Black, it's time to chit chat. You know nothing about blockchain, we here to fix that. You want the news on them new stocks, this where you get that. So go Go and grab you a nice chair, it's time to sit back and talk to profit. Hey, hey, you talking to the profit. Hey, hey, you talking to the profit. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. Let's make some adjustments. There we go. Yeah, I've been messing with the camera, trying to do some, I'm trying to make the background less stuff going on. Anyway, we'll play with it. We'll play with it. All right. Let me say, let's start over here on, we got to find out where yesterday ended and today begins. Where in the hell is that? Swap. Okay, yeah. So, Biotech Breakout, Scorpion, Hootie, Gordon Bennett, Stress Relief, Grant Works, what up? Okay, that's over on the Thetas. There are more. Uh, Valeri, what's going on? And then we have over on the YouTube. For those of you, I can shout you out a lot easier. For whatever reason, Theta doesn't put Theta comments in the comments that they serve on StreamYard, which is where we broadcast out of. So if you want me to say hi and you, if you have some message you want to give to the world, go to YouTube and sign in. And I will click on your little your message in the morning when I say hello to everyone. And you can be immortalized in this video that, that 26 people will watch. Uh, see, uh, Gordon Bennett says, was looking for the Cardano NFTs you showed on Tuesday. Can you remind us, please? Yes. CNFT.io. I'll show you that real quick. CNFT.io. Just as it shows on the screen, that is where those be. Cool, man. Um, okay, let me say hello to Timothy Scorpion, Biotech Breakout. Emmanuel, what up? And we got Jimmy James, Scott, Breakfast Leadership, Michael Murphy, Cross the Pond, depending on where you are. Tiffany, Hoop and Tony, Johnny Midas, Nara. Ooh, we got a little, little break there. Uh, 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 Dubai Money, what's up? Michael, what's up with you, Professor? Good to see you. <laughs> Suze, JJ, Brendan, expat, Matt, Tim. I get that a lot. Do you get that a lot? All right. Uh, there'll be uh, X5 snapshot November 5th for everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> the song. So it's November 5th is on that. If you have Songbird, <laughs> which is another junk token. But you know what? You get some free tokens from the free tokens from the free tokens. So take the free tokens. Phil, what's up? All right. Uh, I think that we've got a uh, mega pack. A Rogers. Mm, 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 mm. I think that's everybody. I think that's, that's everybody we got so far. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Uh, okay. Yeah. So let's, uh, yesterday we did kind of a impromptu session because they were having some problems with the VMix background. So a lot of, you know, when you're leveraging another piece of software and that software is on the fritz, you are on the fritz and they use VMix in the background of money maps. Money map had some VMix issues. It wasn't money map issues. Money map was legit. It was a uh, VMix, which is their, the background software was a little bit shaky. So they, whatever. So anyway, we just launched the show over here. Crypto gamer 420. What up? And so, yeah, here we are. But now this is the normal Tuesday, Thursday thing that we normally do. I'm going to be doing some cool things. I got some of these. Do you guys know what these are? Here, let me show you before we get into it. You know what? When we get back, I'm going to do the commercial, non-commercial, commercial, non-commercial non -commercial break. 
Here's my artwork. These are my four pieces of, of Cardano artwork. They're actually super badass. They're these landscapes that are um, set up by these GANs, these, um, gen uh, uh, I guess they're general, uh, generative, or is it generalized or whatever, um, adversarial networks, general adversarial networks, general generalized adversarial networks that do cool kind of narrow AI type creation of artwork. And they're, it's cool stuff. It's really neat stuff. So uh, I've been collecting a, a few of them. Those are the only ones I find cool. All the other artwork on Cardano, if we're being honest, is awful. <laughs> it's really bad. There are not good uh, NFTs on Cardano yet. But soon, soon, we keep saying soon. Demayan, good to see you. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do our commercial, non-commercial break. We'll come back. We're going to talk about Michael Burry. He hates crypto, and he really hates Bitcoin. He's not completely wrong. Sylvia, good to see you. He's not completely wrong. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Some of the stuff he's saying is accurate. Then you got these other rubes, like Mark Cuban weighing in on it. He's mostly wrong, but not completely wrong. Remember the same Mark Cuban that said a year ago, I'd rather have bananas than Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, I hope you buy bananas instead of Bitcoin because I don't like the idea of the crypto space moving and Mark Cuban benefiting from it at all because everything he touches turns to garbage because he's the worst, worst investor with zero ability to look at the future. He sold a crappy company twice and he's rich. He bought a team and, and built up its value and then summarily decimated its value into one of the worst teams in the NBA from being the best team, arguably, in the NBA. He's terrible on Shark Tank. Everything he touches turns to dust. He's the opposite of the Midas touch. What Mark Cuban says is generally 180% the, uh, the wrong way from the decision you want to make. But again, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. So I'm sure Mark Cuban has something good to say, but not yet. So when he says, I don't know about Bitcoin, but I love Ethereum, that's because you don't understand Ethereum, you rube. But I don't want to beat up on him. He's got $4.3 billion. And the fact that he hasn't at least, he hasn't squandered it. So I guess that's a success. Good for him. James, good to see you over on this side. What up? Uh, and uh, Gabian81, good to see you. 9 theta 100, good to see you. Okay, cool. I think we got the normal, Do we got the peeps. All right, so we're going to talk Michael Burry. I'm going to go through this article about why he hates crypto and where, where he might be missing it, but where he's not missing it, where he's not missing it, because some of the things he's saying are not wrong. Um, so we're going to look at that. We're going to look at What's going on with Singularity DAO? There's some changes being made to the staking. For those of you that are staking Singularity DAO, which is the first project to launch under Singularity Net, um, you would probably want to know this. They're making some adjustments to the staking, the bonded staking, bonded, which is the one where you get paid ridiculous. They're making some changes. And on the 17th at, at 10 UTC time, you will be able to flip into either the three-month or the six-month bonded staking pool if you want to and stake into that, and the rewards are beyond ridiculous. And I will take them. Okay, so we will be right back, and we will, uh, we will move on from there. Does this alarm you? Do my glasses alarm you? Do you look like that really wise owl? The wise, wise owl? Here, let me see. So these are Ray-Bans. These are those cool ones. Uh, and you can see, now you can see the little halo thing. These are the ones that Facebook put out with Ray-Bans. They're called um, Ray-Ban Stories. And why are they cool? Well, 
they have cameras, microphone, memory. They, uh, you can record stuff. And that's kind of cool. So we're going to do these cool little interviews on the street. I'm going to be getting them. I'll get five or six of them together, and then we'll put them out where I'm going to ask people about the Bitcoin and see what people know. But anyway, they're really cool. And you can listen to like podcasts and music and all that kind of stuff. So these are called Ray-Ban stories. And this is the pair that the, they said, oh, you won't be able to get those at Ray-Ban. You, you'll have to wait three weeks. I waited three minutes. I ordered it on Amazon. It came the next day. So anyway, for those of you that are interested, they are called Ray-Ban stories and they are smart glasses. Now, do they have anything in here like AR? No. Do they feel kind of light and cheaply made? Yes. Uh, but I don't really have any glasses. The last pair of glasses I got were my glasses for the ocean that I use when I go, um, when I was playing around canoeing and kayaking, all that kind of crap. Now what's cool in the little box, this little box that you get, this is not an ad for them. Don't go buy these. These things are a total waste of money, but you charge it in the box. So you go, you put it in, click and that's it. It's as far as I know, I guess that's how it works. You just click it in and then it's charging. You have a little green light, a little green charging light. So that's fun. Uh, do they suck? Well, I don't know yet. We'll play with them, but it's a cool way to record stuff that you're doing in real time. So that's fun. Yay. Hooray. Fun. Okay. So let's, let's go ahead and get to some price action. Let's go ahead and look and see what's going on in these markets right here. Enough about my stupid toys. Okay. Uh, and if you have a question, please put the word question. James, what's up, buddy? Uh, if you, uh, and uh, Lageo, is that right? Or is it Lageo? Pronunciation. Crypto for life. Good to see you. Uh, over here, we've got, okay, I think, oh, and Joe Pirate there. Now we got everyone. Okay. You guys probably know uh, what's going on with Bitcoin. It looks like people are front running an ETF. An ETF is coming. We just don't know when. Will it be the beginning of 2023? Maybe. Jasnock, what's up? Will it be the beginning of 2022? More likely. Will it be this year? Eh, there's some interesting speculation. And we may get into that speculation if we have some time. So we'll see. But right now, I think people are trying to front run that trade. I think an ETF is coming in the next six months. Whether it's beginning of 2022, spring of 2022, or in the next two or three months. Now, the speculation on why the ETF is coming sooner than later is because there were some adjustments to the ARC filing and to some of the other ones. Now, if I'm the SEC, okay, put yourself in the position of the SEC right now. And this is a good, this is a germane question um, that uh, John asks. Would an ETF in BTC drive crypto prices down? No. Uh, no, I believe it would... It would drive Bitcoin prices really, really high, really, really fast, in my opinion. And a lot of that's the enthusiasm, but a lot of that is a lot of facilities that can't get access to Bitcoin um, suddenly, let me move my camera, suddenly having access to Bitcoin related products. Now, these are cash settled, not physically settled. That's a little skewy to me. That's a little bit sketchy. Um, and anyway, that goes in, we, we could game theory out why the SEC is more likely to certify a cash settled rather than a physically settled. They think physically settled products have more chance for market manipulation, cash settled less. But the price is still the price. And if the settlement price is based, if it's cash settled, that means you have a lot of people trading quasi Bitcoin and not real Bitcoin. And then we're back to the same gold problem. But anyway, that is what it is because they like these products where the physical markets are only barely attached, which is incredibly sketchy and one of the problems with gold and silver ETFs. But I digress. I don't want to get into an ETF discussion really, but I do want to discuss this real quick is that the SEC is not likely to certify one. It's likely to certify many ETFs all at once. It punted four applications and then there's another two that just got filed. Well, updated the ARC. Um, I think it's ARC and Valkyrie. Uh, those two those two ETFs were uh, updated to actually give symbols, market symbols. And there's some guys speculating, and I, I don't say guys to be sexist. I mean, it, there's two guys that are lawyers. One of them is speculating that they usually make an adjustment like this. 
right before they launch the asset. So basically like as if they know they're going to get it certified. So they actually launch, they actually go and amend the filing to show what the symbol would be in the markets. Like the ARC one is ARC something. And the other one is like BTF. I'm like WTF BZ YOLO. What's up? So anyway, it looks like some people may be front running and that's why you see this price action in the Bitcoin. We got over 58 yesterday, last night. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of bullish. Uh, I, I actually sold some 58 puts for like 2,200 bucks. So I'm excited. I think those will, those will come in and I'll do, I'll be like 17, 1800 in the goods. That's good. Uh, okay. Ethereum, Ethereum is melting way up. Why? Well, cause we're stuck using it. That's why we're just stuck using it. There's no way around it. It's frustrating. It's garbage. I'm sure you guys heard about the transaction a couple of days ago where somebody was trying to participate in a token sale. They spent, I don't know, four, almost $500,000 on transaction fees and the transactions failed. And then another hundred and change thousand to cancel the transaction. $500,000 lit on fire because Ethereum. <laughs> you can't make it up. Uh, okay, so, uh, and where would you do that? For those of you that are interested in the options market in and around Bitcoin or Ether, I would take a close look at Ledger X. Um, so, and, and I'm not going to give you a link. It's it's Ledger X, the exchange, not not Ledger X, the uh, the, the Nano X um, uh, cold cord storage device. It's Ledger, Ledger X or Omni.LedgerX.com. Okay. <laughs> Release us from the gas fees. I know, Neil, it sucks. It sucks so bad. JR, hello. And also Scott, hello. Hello to all of you. So, okay, let's keep it going. Um, so, but Ethereum is here. And if you want to buy NFTs, and if you want to do just about anything on 90% of the projects out there, they leverage Ethereum. Listen, look at all the projects that are slowly leaving Ethereum. AGIX, AGI became AGIX token. Why? They left Ethereum. Uh, fetch to their native token. They leaving Ethereum. Look at all the projects that the minute they can, they do. This is going to happen more, not less. You are going to see a migration. Not Everyone's not going to leave Ethereum because a lot of these platforms, they don't care. And they're also under the assumption, like during a nuclear war, like how will you maintain telephone service? And AT&T said, well, as each city gets irradiated, that will, that will free up the satellites for more, for other people making emergency calls. See, we're fine. Great. Well, that's kind of the way it is for Ethereum projects. They're like, hey, as more as more projects leave Ethereum, the fees will reduce and da 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 da. And they're and that's very wishful thinking. And I think that's even if 10% of the companies that are currently leveraging Ethereum were leveraging it, it would still be a fail. It still has problems. Lots of problems. Can they make this transition to 2.0? Maybe. I mean, of course they can, but in a timely manner. I don't know. Um, but I know I'll still have to use Ethereum for a long time because tons of my NFTs are on a, a 721 tokens. Ethereum is not going anywhere. There's a certain embedded. Now, OpenSea and some of these other platforms, they're garbage too. OpenSea's garbage, and it's the biggest NFT platform. A lot of these... Um, NFT platforms of the future, it's going to be an amalgam of a bunch of different potential tokens. And you'll be able to, and I think you'll be able to even flip, and I know people aren't really talking about this, but I think you'll be able to flip from uh, your your token. You'll be able to wrap NFTs is what I'm saying and, and go, you'll be cross-platform non-fungible tokens. That will come and then that will ease because if you want to move your tokens around, you can wrap it and send it and did all sorts of co kind of cool stuff. So all that stuff's coming. These are all just software upgrades. So be careful that your arguments are more value-based and less about, well, they can't do this or they can't do that. Everybody can do everything given enough time. Ethereum can, given enough time, upgrade. But it's, it's whether that's – the upgrade is meaningful – in an amount of time where they don't lose so much. And also, I think that everybody is going to be leveraging every platform that makes sense. It doesn't mean every protocol layer is going to succeed. There are some that will rise to the top as you're seeing. Very likely, Ethereum is going nowhere. 
Cardano going no, I mean, not in a bad way. They're here to stay. Let's say it that way. Ethereum is here to stay. By the way, Ethereum isn't a better Bitcoin. For those of you that listen, Mark Cuban is a dummy. Ethereum is not a better Bitcoin. Ethereum is not Bitcoin, you idiot. Ethereum isn't Bitcoin with, with smart contracts. That's not what it is. They forget that these things are incredibly dissimilar. Why you would want protocol layers and why you would want Bitcoin are two completely different or many different reasons. Some ideological and some common sense and some math. So you, Bitcoin is a store of value. That's it. It, it functions as a proxy, an inverse proxy for bad behavior on the part of governments. But that is it. That is the only similarity. Ethereum is not Bitcoin with smart contracts. You could go into the consensus mechanism and you could say, yeah, they're both proof of work. But they're not the same. The, the state, uh, you know, Ethereum has a global state situation. Bitcoin is UTXO. So there's all sorts of differences and so when you hear people like, well, do you like Bitcoin or Ethereum? No, that's the wrong. That's not even a coherent question. So don't fall into those traps. And when you hear people saying stuff like that, like the Mark Cubans of the world, Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's cool, but Ethereum's a better Bitcoin. No, you're such a dummy. And then when you say, well, if Bitcoin, Ethereum or everything. No, they, they serve different purposes for different things. Now, if you like Ethereum, you should, you should really like like just period. If you like Ethereum, you also like Cardano and Polkadot. You have to because that's where the DNA from the original founders of Ethereum left to. So if you like Ethereum, you necessarily like Cardano and Polkadot. The only people that don't are the people that are uh, materially invested in Ethereum and have a bias towards that project and potentially a worry that 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 their market cap well. It's not really a market cap, but that that their hold on the smart contract industry will start to lessen and they will start to lose that dominance as they share some of the transactional capacity with Polkadot, Cardano, Algo, Matic, Cosmos, and go down the list. Brr, near, obviously important in there. So you almost have to own Bitcoin and smart contracts, not a smart contract platform. It's Bitcoin and smart contracts and dApps and DeFi and AI. You have to own sectors. And so the tribalist kind of mentality, it doesn't work. It'll keep you poor. Brandon and I were talking yesterday and, you know, the, the Bitcoin maxis have this thing, you know, have fun being poor. They say this and it's very dickish and, but they're not wrong. Are they right? Like, Things now they're wrong. They're saying it for the wrong reasons, but the sentiment makes sense. If people refuse to kind of loosen up and take a bigger picture approach, a more game theoretical approach, if you're not willing to be wrong a little bit, if you're not willing to kind of revisit your prior opinions, have fun being poor. And poor doesn't mean you have no money. Poor means you've lost the potential to increase your wealth, right? You can have a million bucks and be poor, bro. If that's your last million, you about to be poor. You remember when a million was a lot? When I was a kid, a million was like, dope. That guy's a millionaire. Now it means nothing. So you're not there yet when you get a million. You're not there yet when you get five million. You might be there when you get 10. <laughs> Mark Cuban is not investing in AGIX, Jesus. Um. So how do you own smart contracts? Okay, so let's go through it. That's a that's another good question, John. So here's uh, this is okay, I own all of these assets except where where's the one? I don't own graph anymore. I don't own one inch anymore. I don't own rune or engine anymore. I follow them. I don't own OGN. I own everything else on this list accidentally some of them. Anyway, the way I would do it, I own other assets too, but the way I would do it is I would say, okay, I want at least a quarter, a quarter, 25%, no less. Come on, people. Why is the F up? 25% of your crypto portfolio, this is a safe number. For me, you can do whatever you want. I'm not telling you guys what to do. I'm just throwing some ideas out there. You, you chew them up and do what you want. For me, I, I don't imagine a portfolio that has less 
than 25% Bitcoin. I am not a Bitcoin maxi. I'm a, I'm a common sense maximalist, right? I'm a game theory maximalist. You need some Bitcoin. Don't be stupid. The whole world is saying yes to Bitcoin. Even the people that don't like Bitcoin are saying yes to Bitcoin because it's cool. I mean, I'm in it. I like Bitcoin. Great. If you don't have any Bitcoin, <laughs> the maxis, they're wrong for why they say this. But you know what? Have fun being poor. There is a better than not chance. First, when we get into Michael Burry here in a second, he's wrong about Bitcoin. He doesn't get it. But he's not wrong about some of these other dumpster coins. So I'm not going to beat up the Bitcoin thing right now. Just you should have it as part of your portfolio. Okay. Then to own smart contracts, you go right down the list and you take the top six, top seven smart contract platforms and just own them all. Own them all, right? And you have you have 20 bucks, then probably eight to ten dollars of that 20 would would be well served in no, no, no. no. Well, we're getting to that, John. We're getting to the other 20, 75%. But also, I'm not I can't build your portfolio for you. You've got to. You've got to build your portfolio with assets that you believe in, that you trust, and that you can explain to your grandmother. Not my grandmother because she's strung out on meth, but your grandmother. Um, so it, it would do – it would serve you well to research Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, Cosmos, Algo, Theta. Uh, well, not – I'm going to take Theta back. We don't know about Theta yet. Near. Uh, yeah, I would say those are the major those are the major smart contract platforms. I'm not putting Solana on that list because I think what they've done is inorganic and kind of spammy and I don't trust anything that comes out of FTX or really Blockfolio anymore. By the way, you guys know that crypto briefing is a complete scam, right? Crypto briefing, that news source is all pumped advertising. It's all advertising. There is nothing organic or newsworthy that comes out of crypto briefing. Well, let me not say nothing. Because that's absolutist. Sometimes I'm sure they accidentally wrote a decent story. There is, I've not seen any articles that came out of crypto briefing that I would trust without getting 400 other verifications because all of it is being pumped by the same guys that bought FTX. You guys know they bought Blockfolio. So the news you see in the news section of Blockfolio is incredibly biased towards certain projects. A little bit of common sense, and you see what that means. Uh, so, just be careful what you read. Anyway, have some exposure. I don't know. I think probably 25 to 50% of your portfolio should be uh, protocol layers. Um, and and yes, uh, I would say DOT. Matic is kind of smart contract, kind of not. It's kind of a layer one and a half. Um, thoughts on Nexo entry? I'm not sure. Neil, you're going to have to be more specific. I don't know what you, I don't know what you mean by that. Anyway, um, Luna, I'm not a big fan of. I just don't think that managing a bunch of smart contracts is all that interesting. I mean, sorry, a bunch of stable coins is all that interesting. I don't think governments are going to, you know, the Terra Luna thing. It, it's, I mean, I've read about it. I went back and revisited it. Emmanuel said, hey, go take another look. And just because I, doesn't, I don't like something doesn't mean it's not going to go way up in value. Tons of stuff I don't like goes up in value. I talked about Solana when it was about 12 bucks and I said, this thing's going to rock it and I'm not going to participate because the people are snakes. The people involved in Solana and pumping it inorganically are effing snakes. FTX is a snake. Sam is a snake. Those dudes are sketchy. Now, sketchy people do all sorts of things that make the tokens go up, right? You have a compliant media full of rubes and lemmings that buy based on what they read and you can pump these projects up but at the end of the day the air is going to come out of those things because they're they're not that interesting game changing world changing stuff and i don't know what the top i don't know what dave i don't know what the top five projects would be i mean it's that all depends on you, you those are really value estimations and that gets very nebulous okay Let's go. You guys get what's going on with prices. It's very exciting. Great. Uh, so let's just do a quick measurement of what's outperforming Bitcoin. So today, Bitcoin is at about 2%. So let's see who's doing better. Uh, Ethereum, doing great. Uh, Cardano, Polkadot is crushing. Why? Parachain auctions coming to a theater near you. They're going to do one a week for five weeks. I think starting in December. 
finally, finally, the same things that was supposed to happen in January are now happening. Ah, good. Is Polkadot still undervalued? In my opinion, it's still way undervalued. This, to me, is a one to three hundred dollar token, and I uh, value value, not price. Don't say, "Oh, Nick said three hundred. Nick did not say three hundred. Nick said value." And David, there, I can't. Uh, some of these things are these are bigger questions. They're side chains. Essentially, the way Polkadot works, there's a main relay chain. Smart contracts do not run on Polkadot. They run on the parachains. They intend to have a hundred companies, a hundred parachains. So that's where they get their throughput. So smart contracts don't run on chain. They run off chain on these side chains, which, which are called parachains, parallel chains. So that's as deep as we'll get into that, but that's coming soon. They're going to do five or six projects. Uh, and then they're going to keep going. They're going to err on the side of slow or on the side of careful, which I think is smart. Um, the last time Gavin Wood rushed, you had three different hacking events for two or three hundred million dollars worth of losses. So I think maybe the doc should chill for a while and go slow. And that's what they're doing. They're going slow. Um, Polkadot has a, a sister chain, so to speak, where they test all of these companies, a, uh, a sister network called Kusama. And that's where they do a lot of the testing. And then these projects kind of work their way up and, and promote onto Polkadot, onto the, you know, they become parachains. But you have to fight for that. You have to, you know, work with the community and do all sorts of cool stuff. So there, there is some benefit to that side chain. Okay. Um, who's outperforming? So Dot's performing great. Uh, Algo, Matic, Cosmos, <laughs> VeChain. Why? Who knows? Uh, so everything is outperforming Bitcoin. Now, just two days ago, everybody was like, oh, my gosh, it's so slow. It's so quiet. Nothing's happening. Oh, man. Bigger time horizons. Everybody needs to have bigger time horizons. Um, so let's let's just relax, have a little bit further out vision. Uh, AR, we're doing fine. One inch, having a great day. Runes, everything's everybody's having a good day. Telcoin, which that is a junk project with junk people, but whatever. It is getting close to a billion. So it's starting to get to the point where once they get into that billion market cap, I start to say, okay, you have to do something more than just be a spammy token. Right now, they're just a spammy token. Um, we'll see. Uh, who else is having a great day? No one else is having a great, great day. Coty's bouncing up a little bit, 5%. 10% uh, on Singularity Net. Um, I'm going to keep buying and buying and buying. That's I'm dollar cost averaging every five days into that. I'm using my Cardano rewards to buy a mixture of Fetch and AGIX for a variety of reasons. I think there's going to be a crunch in that token <clears throat> as these uh, new, it looks like new nets can be the first company to roll out. Okay. Great. We got the price stuff out of the way. We kind of know what's going on. Um, let's go and look at what's going on with Michael, Michael, Michael. Okay. Michael Burry. And I'm sure it's going to give us some details about who Michael Burry is. If you guys don't know, um, the big short investor, Michael Burry. Um, so you, he was played by Batman, right? Uh, has constantly let it be known on Twitter that he thinks the cryptocurrency is in a bubble and that it will crash at some point. Burry believes that crypto market speculation is unprecedented throughout history. Yeah, well, it's a new asset class and everybody has access. And sometimes pure democracy, it ain't so pretty, right? You know, He's he's not wrong. There are there are a lot of unintelligent investors in the crypto space. But you know what? There's even more unintelligent investors in the equity space thanks to scummy, trashy, thieving, pay for order flow companies like Robinhood. Right? Remember, if there's no fees in a product you're using, you are the product. All right. The investor who made his, his name betting against the stock market back in 2008 is back at it again. This time it's in the cryptocurrency market, which, according to Burry, is in a bubble that's due for a massive correction. <laughs> Scary. His latest tweet since deleted because he, he tweets, I guess then he reads them back and goes, oh, I sound like a dick. And then he deletes the tweets. Who else does that? What's his name? CZ Binance does that. 
He tweets projects. They blow up. He goes back and erases his tweets. I never said that. I'm CZ Binance. I'm too busy running from regulators to, you know, to, to do any of that, to, to delete tweets. I, I don't have time for that. Anyway, Michael Burry, they, there's, a, there's a service that archives his tweets just so he can't say he didn't say so. Uh, Cassandra, which is his account, at Michael uh, J. Burry. Okay, I've done this before. How do you short? Uh, I haven't done this before. Okay, by the way, hold on. Um, this is a guy that's supposed to be pretty clever, pretty smart, pretty intelligent. One of the smarter men on earth, right? Okay, I haven't done this before. How do you short a cryptocurrency? How do you put battery in flashlight? I don't understand. There's this one single place which says battery, I, but I don't know what to do from there. I've opened it up. There's a cylindrical space in there that is not dissimilar from the shape of a battery, but beyond that, I am lost. I continue. I haven't done this before. How do you short a cryptocurrency? Do you have to secure a borrow? Is there a short rebate? Can the position be squeezed and called in? In such volatile situations, I tend to think it's best not to short, but I'm thinking out loud here. No, what he's doing is he's trying to make a dickish statement. He's asking, I hope, he's either so dumb that I've given him way too much question or, I mean, um, way too much respect, or he's do. my guess is he's not dumb. Michael Burry's not an idiot. He's doing this to, as a shot across the bow to show us how, how simple and ignorant and how unprepared we are with these archaic tools in crypto sure rebate position squeezes michael you're blowing us away <clears throat> burry has a history of deleting most of his tweets citing that too many followers and of meme coins and, and this is true though <coughs> meme coins and crypto zealots comment on his tweets for their own ends yeah well if you put it in a public venue mr trump people are going to comment on it stupid However, the Michael Burry Archive Twitter account faithfully saves all tweets that are deleted. The big investor repeatedly pours scorn on cryptocurrencies, comparing them to the mid-2000 housing boom in the dot-com bubble because he doesn't understand either of those things, right? These are not the days of looking through bond packages and picking the ones most likely to fail based on demographics. Yeah, Mike, you did the work. A, you weren't the only one, okay? Okay. You weren't the only one that did this. You're not that you don't have the market cornered on reading bond packages. Okay, bro, you read. Great. Warren Buffett reads the newspaper every day. You guys are both getting outperformed by a effing hamster. Keep that in mind. All these dudes are getting nuked by a hamster. So anytime these guys get on CNBC and they tell you how badass they are, they're getting beat by a hamster. Mr. Gox the hamster, by the way, if anybody wants to research. Yeah. They're all getting beat by a hamster. One to nothing, world. <laughs> I guess hamster one, world, human world, negative, not zero. All right. Uh, Burry reserves special scorn for the likes of meme coins such as Shiba Inu and Dogecoin, saying that they are pointless. And he's right. He's right right now. But what he misses, what I think he misses, I'm not going to read the most of the opinion stuff because that's just – me reading someone else's opinion. But while Burry is a smart guy and he does a lot of due diligence homework, he doesn't understand technology. And he doesn't understand – there's a couple of things he doesn't understand. I think he doesn't understand technology. He doesn't, under, he doesn't truly understand the network effect of one smart cow, right? Making a smart cow, that cow gets out and sets all the other cows free. He, he also doesn't understand the value – of a cult community, right? So when he he's notorious for also going heavy shorting, which somehow he knows how to do, uh, he's shorting through puts. He's buying puts against Tesla. And you say, you look at the little box. Is Tesla a crap company? Check. Does Tesla make money if you take out subsidies from the government, basically free money rebates? No. Check. Tesla makes no money. Is Does Tesla have a good business plan? Uh, yes or no? No. Check. This is the short checklist. Uh, is Tesla run by a guy that, that has many failed businesses? Check. Is Tesla run by a guy that if he sold one share, the entire company stock would collapse because all the because all the ignorant rubes that invest in it would then lose faith? Check. 
is Tesla, uh, do they, is every one of their products quality or do they have all sorts of problems all over the world with really poor quality? Check, poor quality. Uh, do they do more damage to the environment through strip mining and then buy carbon credits so that they can tell everyone they're carbon neutral? Yes, check. By all of the ways you measure a bad company, check, 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 check. Tesla is a bad company. Tesla has had six or seven quarters of profit, even with all of their rebates, even with all of their free government money and this kind of quasi-competitive environment. And it's been 17 and change years, six or seven quarters, 17 years with all free money. They still can't get it done. Did did Elon Musk create Tesla? Did he did he build it from the ground up? No, he bought it from two. He bought it from two guys that did build it. He didn't create Tesla. He saw it, and he's an innovator, and he's a smart guy. He said, "Hey, that's cool. I'm going to grab that," and he pushed the conversation. That's what Elon does. He pushes the conversation. He's a thought leader. So while he is not a businessman, he's a poor businessman, but he's a genius, and he's a thought leader, and that's okay. You don't have to be good at everything. You hire businessmen and businessmen do the business stuff and then you do the thought leading and the provoking and, and that's great. So Michael Burry with his checklist, he goes, well, there's only one thing that Tesla has going for it. It's the cult that follows Elon. Yeah. But then if you weigh all those and what's more important, none of those things matter to this cult because this is a young, vigilant, me too Tolerance for everything. Don't assume anyone's pronouns. Everything has to be equal. Ambiguous bathrooms. You know, that's what he's fighting against. And he doesn't understand that. The cult will win, Michael. The cult will crush you. They will step on your neck. And they will laugh at you. And you don't get it. So he's missing that. That's important. He's also missing what he's he's looking at bitcoin as a thing and people pouring into a thing and these other tokens and he's confusing that yes there's a bunch of 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 rubes and lemmings pouring into stuff typically i see somebody with shiba and dogecoin in their portfolio i know that they don't know i know that they're mostly clueless they can come up with excuses they can they can say whatever they want i know looking at that portfolio that they are well intentioned idiots and that's okay we all started as idiots and then we we go and learn and we do research and we and we become more informed and we make less idiotic decisions right that's that's normal there's all sorts of things that i'm an idiot about i don't know anything about woodcraft and pottery i'm an idiot i wouldn't go do that so that's okay that people are uninformed and they're voting with their dollars and all that all that stuff's fine i like the idea that people might come to the space for Shiba and Dogecoin and, and Unsafe Moon and all these crappy projects because they're like just throwing money in the gambling machine. Most people are in crypto because they saw other people get paid in crypto. They have no clue what it is. But when you read things like the Bitcoin white paper, all nine pages of it, you start to shift your thinking a little bit and you start to go, there's more to this. There, there's more to this crypto space than maybe I've given a sufficient look. Let me look again. Let me look deeper. And then you start to go, ah, these are junk. These are meme tokens. And then you look at the people behind them, a cult leader, a failed businessman, a bunch of rubes. And you say, is that the team I want to invest in? Or do I want guys like Adam back at Bitcoin core? Or do I want guys like Vitalik Buterin and Lubin over at Ethereum? Or do I want guys like Charles Hoskinson? And the, and the enormous team or do uh, at Cardano and IOHK, or do I want guys like uh, Dr. Ben, uh, uh, Dr. Ben Gortzel at uh, Singularity Net and all of the things that they're innovating is as we iteratively approach uh, general intelligence and synthetic intelligence, or do I want, uh, you know, uh, Polkadot and the team over there, Gavin, Dr. Gavin Wood, the guy that created Solidity. You know, do I do I want what they're doing over there? Their their re envisionment of what smart contracts look like, or the team over at Algorand of freaking geniuses, or do I? And then you go, oh, uh, or the 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 zealot, the creep, the quasi crook, the business idiot, and thousands and thousands of Reddit mafia. 
and it's fine. I'm not a Reddit hater. I think Reddit's amazing. If you want to have a good time, get on Reddit. You will laugh your tail off. Some really funny, very clever people. But but funny, clever people don't always make the best investors. They're just funny, clever people. And so you have to be careful. Uh, the halo effect. And when you have giant groups, any giant groups, that they're very powerful, but that, that power doesn't equal intelligence. So when Michael Burry is saying that these projects, most of them are stupid and pointless and dumb, he is not wrong, but he will still lose. He will lose because he's throwing the baby out with the bathwater. For him, Sheba, junk, doge, junk, at least junk right now because that could change. It could change with a couple of good hires and a couple of software iterations in that community. And this is the thing. Something that's stupid right now might not be stupid in the future. Something that's cool right now might be stupid in the future. Things can change very quickly. So we can't assume that the world of the future looks the way right now looks. Matter of fact, we're assuming it doesn't. That's how we invest. Because if next year looked like this year looks, none of us would have made any money because all of our value propositions will be flat. If everything looks the way it looks right now, without any forward progress, we've done nothing. We haven't moved the needle. We haven't, the, the discussion hasn't moved. The hockey puck stayed there in the ice. It's melted into the ice. Everybody's just staring at it. So this is a very organic, very liquid, very liquid situation, free flowing, volatile, scary, there's often a vacuum of information, and the people giving you the information are idiots, mostly. The people that write articles in crypto, it's not real media. The real media is too busy getting their pockets lined and putting out fake, you know, garbage, twisted, biased news. So what's better, the biased, twisted, lobbyist garbage that you hear in the traditional media that's clearly with an agenda or the idiots in crypto? I don't know. I'm not sure. Thing is, you got to kind of absorb all of it. And then just cancel out the noise. And who is best at canceling out the noise is who wins in crypto, in investing, right? Who is a, a good judge of, and let me bring up the banner because it's important. We got to go over this stuff on a regular basis. Uh, well, first of all, critical thinking is important. But when we look at these teams, cash, value, direction, price, liquidity, and meat left on the bone. You have to have a way to audit these things. I don't think Michael Burry is doing this because there's no there's no printout he can make other than he could read white papers and things like that. He clearly has no interest in doing that. But if he did, he might start to see that distributed ledgers, trustless transactions, and a, a set – as a first step, a set of currencies – that run parallel to the traditional financial system that run parallel to both the dollar and the euro dollar and every other currency has value and merit, right? A, an electric, a digital gold has merit, right? Something that you can't print into obscurity. Um, but could he argue that that doesn't make a good currency? Of course, because Bitcoin is not a good currency. It's a, it's a poor currency, but it's a great store of value. Currencies, in my opinion, and I'm a fan of Jeff Snyder and Emil Kalinowski, currencies need to expand and contract when populations and supply and business cycles expand and contract. If you don't have an expansionary and, and contractionary currency, currency elasticity, then you have price problems with consumables, right? Because if you have a supply of currency that can't get bigger and smaller, when populations and business cycles get bigger and smaller – then the price of individual assets and especially consumables, foodstuffs, things like that, they can skyrocket or drop to the gutter when you have deflationary environments. So there is some amount, and we don't know what the perfect amount is, but there's some amount of currency, if you can call it manipulation or manufacturing or, or stability and flexibility, right? Elasticity. Currency elasticity is important in a in a currency, right? A currency. Bitcoin's not a currency. Bitcoin is incredibly important. And it's and it's important even if Bitcoin crashes today to zero. What it showed people is that you can run all sorts of systems of finance and data distribution 
on a distributed permissionless ledger that has no single point of failure. If that's all that Bitcoin did, it did it well. And then you move on from there and you start to make these other assumptions like, well, what about these other projects, these layer one protocols, these smart contract platforms, all this kind of stuff. And that's where you start getting into the guts of it. But reduce it to critical thinking. When you look at all this stuff, look, my whole point of doing this back when we started, it was like me. Let me see. It was me, Jared, JJ, Nara, uh, Jared. Did I say Jared? JJ, Jared, me, Nara, uh, Lance. There was like six people. Uh, Jerry. Like, there was like so few of us. And our whole point was this. Just be smart, bro. Don't do what we do. Don't do anything. Don't ever do anything that I do because I say I did it or whatever as an offhanded statement. Come to your own conclusions, but understand, just be a critical thinker. And game theory is just critical thinking laid on top of economics. Be able to analyze anything in your life, but especially these projects. Be able to communicate it, right? If you can communicate it, if you can express it, then you know it. Be open-minded to new things and to old things that might have changed, right? If something I think Ripple, the company, is garbage, even though there's tons of good individuals there, but there's a couple of bad apples, but a couple of changes, and I would be willing to completely change that. If I see a material difference in Ripple post-SEC, then I would say, well, maybe XRP might have some other uses, not as a bridge currency, because that's over with, because technology kind of whistled that away. but there could be other uses. They could create giant liquidity pools. They could go, they could go settle repo transactions. There's all sorts of things they could do. I'm willing to be wrong because it's like, would you rather be uh, right or would you rather be rich? I would rather be rich. I don't care if I'm wrong about stuff. I want to be willing to be wrong. You should be willing to be wrong. Problem solving and creativity. Analysis, communication, open-mindedness, problem solving, and creativity. If these things are the bedrock of your decisions, you're going to win more than the guy next to you because other people won't do the mental homework. You need to think about thinking. Michael Burry is not thinking about thinking. He's thinking about sounding right. I'm going to short Tesla. I'll show everyone. No, you won't show everyone because we all know Tesla is a garbage company. It's not a surprise. You're not saying anything that we don't all know. We agree with you, Mike. Tesla is garbage, but you're going to lose that trade because you're fighting a cult. How's that worked out? Look at all the religious wars, the, the crusades. It could, come on, man. You don't fight a cult. You get out of the way of a cult. You don't like it, don't touch it. But don't short it, bro. You idiot. I don't even – look, I don't like Michael Burry. I respect him for what he's done in the past. I think he's really blowing it on Bitcoin because he doesn't get it. But I, I'm not a hater. I don't, I'm not a hater of Mark Cuban. As a person, I've met Mark Cuban. He is a very nice dude. He's an idiot when it comes to investing. He said some dumb stuff, but we've all said some dumb stuff. Okay? As a human, great dude. He gives a lot back. He's a great individual. Anybody that lives in the Texas area knows this. Mark Cuban is a giving dude. He is a nice guy. My problems with Mark Cuban have nothing to do with him as a human. It's that he's an idiot and other people hear that and they ascribe because he's rich, he must be smart. Because he's rich, things he says make sense. Because he's rich, if he likes this, it's gold. And that's not true. That is very flawed. He got lucky several times. Good on him. Good on him. Okay? Same thing. Michael Burry, smart guy. Probably a cool human. But he is completely flawed when he's – saying that because Doge, because Shiba and all these meme coins that the whole space is stupid. Probably 90% of the space is stupid. There's 10,000 plus tokens. Think of that. I mean, do you think, okay, there's 10,000 tokens. Do you think a thousand of that 10,000 are good projects? No way. <laughs> do you think a hundred, do you think 1% of the projects are good projects? No. I don't. I don't think there are 100 good digital asset projects. Out of 10,000 plus, I don't think that there's 100. Are there 50? No. Are there 30? Maybe. Maybe. A third of 
a third of 1%. So if he says 99.7% of the crypto space is garbage, I agree, but you still don't go against it because you will get nuked. And that's why he doesn't understand community. He doesn't understand the, the value of a cult, the value of a group of vigilant, incentivized individuals, even if their incentives are perverse. Could you say that 99% of crypto is garbage and that 99% of the investors are idiots? Yes, but you don't go against them. There's a difference between disagreeing and taking the other side of the trade. Okay. I don't like Solana because I don't like the people involved. Okay. I'm not going to try to short or try. Are you crazy? That'd be asinine. So he's missing it. I hope he comes around because I think he would be really good. He's like Nuriel Rubini, only Nuriel Rubini turned the corner and pivoted and said, I may be missing something with Bitcoin. I think I'm going to take a different look at this. I think I'm going to take a different look at this. Nuriel is coming around to the idea that Bitcoin is not what he thought it was because he is a smart individual, because he's willing to be wrong, because he is a critical thinker. Okay. Nuriel Rubini is not an idiot. They call him Dr. Doom. He's, and again, predicting that housing was going to crash was kind of common sense. You know, no market moves up forever. It, these things had to happen. He, like many others, looked at this market and said, ah, ha, ha, scammy, shysty, I'm out. Anyway, that's my end. I don't want to, I don't want to bash Michael Burry. Um, let me see. So Michael Burry is not someone you think we should listen to crypto space. Who do you believe we should glean insights from? No. Besides that, no, you don't do not listen to me. Let me be very clear. I should not be a source for people as far as what I should buy, because I promise you, I talk to my private clients a lot different than I talk to you guys because hashtag obviously, right? We have di different interests different goals, different motivations. But I talk to you guys the way I would talk to Jerry or any of my friends when we get when we just get on the line and say, what's going on in the crypto space? Let's have a meaningful conversation that's not biased. The only bias is how do we make more money? How do we make more currency units? How do I squeeze a dollar out of a nickel over and over and over and over? You only have to do a 20X five times before you never, ever work again. If you do it a sixth time, nobody you know ever works again. If you do it a seventh time, you buy countries. So just that's all. I mean, just do your own research, right? But have a framework. And my framework is critical thinking and game theory. So I would urge you guys, even if this isn't your framework, have a framework. Have some kind of framework that you're consistent with that gives you somewhere to start. Okay, I have some tools to start with. I can analyze, I can communicate, I can be open-minded, I can do some problem solving and creativity. Then I can lay on top of it, you know, the basic tenets, the tenets of game theory. Okay? And so you say, well, what does that even mean? Is it game theory? Game theory is the study of math ma mathematical models of strategic interaction between rational decision makers. Again, when you have a bunch of rubes doing psychotic things, it's very tough to factor that. But on the aggregate, you can see their behavior. Okay, that's technical analysis, looking at aggregate behavior in the past and trying to ascertain what the future might look like. It's wrong because irrational behavior is something that's very difficult to factor because irrational behavior might only be irrational 5% of the time. And then, it, and then it's irrational 90% of the time. It's very difficult to assume what crazy people will do or what the uninformed will do because they're, they're dealing with a different corpus of data for their decision making. But you, the, to have the best shot, you should be game theoretical. Study the mathematical models of strategic interaction between rational decision makers. It has applications uh, in fields of social science as well as uh, logic and computer science as well as economics. To do this, you focus on long-run objectives of all groups involved, not just one. Remember, not just the, not just the white ball or the eight ball, but every ball and all the particle interactions. Economics can be subjected to vested interest. Matter of fact, they mostly are. Humans, when they're presented with a challenge, they say, can I do it and what's in it for me? So you need to factor that in. You need to look at the long run effects that are usually much more complicated than the short run effects. All the little you know, decision forestries that people go through. In game theory, 
there is an assumption. This is also in economics. The assumption is of rationality and maximization. It's assumed that players within a game or a system will ration, will that are they are rational and they will strive to maximize their payoffs in the game, in the environment. Okay? So if you look at a bunch of individuals, and this also has to do with, you know, in AI, this is this comes up a lot. You know, what is you know intelligence and life kind of merge together when you look at, you know, maximizing computable reward functions in computable environments, right? Following the tenets of Darwinian evolution. You know, you could say that 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 is kind of a combination of life and intelligence, right? Maximizing payoff, maximizing your payoffs in an environment and assuming that people competing in that same environment will also maximize their payoffs to the greatest extent. And if everybody's assuming that everybody's making rational decisions, you can reduce the most complex decisions into simple yes or no, one or two, black or white. And that's all you're doing. You're taking what looks complex and reducing it to simple decisions. So you have to filter out all the noise. And in order to do all this, you just have to have somewhere to start. You have to have a base. And whatever your base is, you constantly check that base to make sure that's accurate because that's your foundation for decision making. And if that's accurate, you're good to go. All right. That's all I'm going to say on that. I do want to um, tell you guys about something that's going on with Singularity Net. They just put this out this morning. I got this from one of the devs over there, uh, John. He's a cool dude. I don't know about a lot of the other people. I, Marcelo is also a cool dude. Cool team over at Singularity Dow. Singularity, for those of you who don't know, was the first uh, project to come out of uh, uh, Singularity Net. So Singularity Dow, uh, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, their thing is Dynasets. Now, as they've been launching the token, everybody that had AGIX that signed up for it got airdrops. That was dope. That was, I think, April 17th was that snapshot for four months. They gave out free tokens. Great. The tokens at one point had done like a, like a 50 or a 60x, but now they're down to just a 20x, which is still dope. Okay. Um, they have two staking things. So when you go to Singularity DAO staking, they have bonded and unbonded staking. Unbonded staking pays about 17%. It's just like it sounds. The, the tokens are not stuck in there. You can unlock them, harvest the gains, and walk away. The bonded staking locks it up. There's going to be a three month, which is 90 days ish, and a six month. Meaning you can lock up the tokens, and this is beginning on the 17th of October at 10 UTC. Okay, and there, again, it says there's some adjustments might be made. But at that time, you will be able to take your Singularity DAO, and if you want to, throw it into the three-month or six-month bonded staking contract. What do those pay? Well, well, a lot. Um, right now, it's over 40%. It's like 46%. Matter of fact, I will give you, I'll get you the exact number. It is in the bonded staking. So the, the unbonded staking is 16.7% APR, which is really good still. In the bonded staking, and this is the contract that's about to come to, to go away. Uh, let's see. Let me hit the old refresh. You can't see this because you can't see my private pool because you've got no business looking at my privates. Uh, it's 46.7%. And, and I'm guessing in the six month, it's going to be even better than that. Now, I don't know what the numbers are, but Jesus, 46%. So if you like the project and if you're not planning on selling anytime soon, I would urge you to consider staking. And what are the three steps you need to take? It is simple. One, unstake from Epic One. Two, approve the new six-month pool contract. So a click. An unstake. Yes, it's going to cost you some Ethereum. Approve the six month. Approve. Yes, it's going to cost you some Ethereum. Stake into the six month pool. Yes, it will cost you some Ethereum. What does that mean? Have yourself about ugh, probably a quarter to a half Ethereum ready to do this if you're already staked. Now, if you're not staked with Singularity DAO, then all you would need to do is approve the six month contract and stake into the pool. Approve it, stake it. Done. 46 plus percent. I don't even know what the six month will pay, but I bet it's dope. Uh, so I'm kind of excited about that. Can I add more to your current un, uh, bonded? You will be you will be able to add to the bonded. You can't right now, but in three days that opens up. 3 a.m. Oh, 3 a.m. Pacific. Nice one, Gordon. Good one. 3 a.m. Pacific. So it's 10 UTC. So you just have to look up on Google. What is your what your time zone? Just say what time is it UTC time and it'll tell you. Okay, so 3 p.m. 
Pacific, I guess. Is that 3 a.m. or p.m.? 3 a.m. We're going to be waking up early. Early. Late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. Okay? So I say this because many of you are kind of getting excited about staking and all the things that you can do with these protocol layer assets, and that's a good one. So I would urge everyone that has Singularity DAO to at least consider, at the very minimum, go into the unbonded staking and go get yourself some, some free tokes for hanging out. Get some free, get those tokes, bro. Uh, yes, and hopefully the gas fees are low, but if you have a bunch, of, although I imagine that the Singularity DAO community is pretty small, therefore I don't think we're going to move the needle on Ethereum fees, which are currently expensive right now. Um, <clears throat> anyway, there we go. I hope that helps and answers some questions. Uh, where should I move SDAO for the staking? It should be right now, Singularity DAO token should be in your MetaMask account. If you have it anywhere else, move it to MetaMask. Um, I don't, Lynn, does I don't have any, I don't have any idea about GrowDAO. Um, cool. All right. Uh, game theory for dummies. <laughs> no, dude, dummies aren't good at game theory. But you know what? There probably is a game theory for dummies. Um, we used to do a lot of game theory training early in the show, like uh, about, well, maybe the first three or four months of the show, we did lots of game theory training and uh, game theory and cognitive bias. But everybody that was watching the show for like the first six months, they all got rich and left. I think they don't even, they don't need it anymore. They're like, we're rich, bro. We don't need to listen to your crap. So good on them. Uh, okay. Let's call it a day. Stay out of trouble. Don't do anything. My poor insolvent drunk string out on meth. Grandmother wouldn't do. And you know what she would do? She would throw us a like. This is a non-monetized channel. I only ask for a like. And if you're really dope, you would leave a comment because if you leave a like and a comment, then YouTube will index the video higher than videos that just get likes or views. Views don't really mean that much. Only thing that apparently means anything is likes and comments. So if you say like and say cool bro or you dumb or whatever, or my favorite color is orange chartreuse, whatever. I like duvet covers. That's cool. A comment and a like is good for the video. And why is it good for this channel? Because we're not trying to sell you shit. We're just trying to get people to be smarter than the fat kid at the campfire. Right? That's it. That's all you got to be. Check us out on Money Map, by the way. Um, go to Money Morning Live slash, I think it's like Nick Black Replays. It's in the, there's a link in the description. Um, so you can watch those videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can watch them live. I think you have to be a member to participate, but there's a lot of good content and it's not only crypto content. There's all sorts of other good shows. Um, we have Mark, Sebastian, Kenny, Olivia. We have Garrett. Um, there's a lot of cool people on that channel. I learn a lot. It's like in the day, like if I'm just banging around, I'll just go jump on and watch the, the live shows. Um, uh, there's, they just brought in some new people that are really cool. So money map is really good at bringing neat, interesting kind of personality. So go check it out. Also check out trading, trading TV, trading.tv. There's also a link for that, but I don't get anything for this, by the way, these links are not like monetized links. It's just a way for you to click and go see it. Um, so go check out trading TV. They're integrating a full service exchange with, uh, live content. And so the discussions that we've been having is we are going to have our show be a live show, one of their one of their kind of headline shows when they launch, you know, fully launch. So that's pretty dope. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, cool. Stay out of trouble. Um, stay in school. And again, don't do anything. My poor insolvent drunk strung on a meth grandmother wouldn't do. And, you know, that ain't that much. LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James. <laughs>
Hey, this is the profit with Nick Black. It's time to chit chat. You know nothing about blockchain. We here to fix that. You want the news on them new stocks? This where you get that. So go and grab you a nice chair. It's time to sit back and talk to profit. Hey, hey, he talking to the profit. Hey, hey. You talk, we talking condos and nice clothes and dropping Lambos. I remember the night colds, we couldn't stand those. Try to drive on them house roads, but had to stay low. Now there's solutions to hard bills we couldn't pay for. I talked to profit to get some profit, we couldn't change the top. If it's a stock and I need a cop it, I wait for him to drop it. Ain't no option, let's get it popping, we chilling in the trap. I need some crypto playing in my pocket, by any means I rock. This is the profit with Nick Black, it's time to chit chat. You know nothing about blockchain, we here to fix that. You want the news on the new stocks, this where you get that. So go and grab you a nice chair. It's time to sit back and talk to profit. Hey, hey, you talking to the profit? Hey, hey, you talking to the profit? It's all fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen.